We're going to round up or conclude our look at the sample parameters now by dealing with the set buttons and also with the nudge buttons. Now these buttons, all four over here and the two nudge buttons, are tied to the global quantize up here. And to really get the best effect out of these, we're going to want to pull this value down to at least a quarter note. Now you can experiment with these more later, but this is a great way again to create some new clip ideas. We're going to start with the arpeggiator. I'm going to start a basic drum pattern behind it. And then add in the arpeggiator. We're going to say what would happen if we started the start point there. So when I click set, it captures the point I'm currently at. So now let's launch it again. Okay, starting from the beginning. So it only plays eight of the short notes, then jumps into the long. We can also create weird things by getting it in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and hide this info view to give us more room. Again, we can do it simply through this reveal triangle down here. And let's listen again. And let's start in a weird place. So let's bring our start point back to the beginning and use our set button now when we get to the second beat of two. Set. Now let's launch it. So now we've got a three note phrase and a long one. So we've got short, 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 long. Again, let's try it again and this time we'll use the set bunt. I'm just going to hold on set, set on 4-3, and stop and hear what that sounds like. So you can hear now that we've got a completely different pattern just by changing the start point. And the great thing about the set button is that we can hear it live. We could also set the ending there by changing the entire length using the set button. But that's only becomes enabled when you have loop turned off. Now let's pull this back to the beginning and deal with some loop ideas now. So I'm going to begin playback. Set the loop start point. So we can do that by ear. Let's pull this back to the beginning. And so I just create set points. So we can create very short ones and very long ones. Let's pull this back to the beginning now. Typing in one period zero period zero and enter. And pulling my loop length back out. Now we can use these loop points as the song's playing along, etc and create new vibes in here. This is also great to do with your nudge buttons, but notice these are grayed out until I begin playback. Here's spacebar. They immediately become active. Now again, these nudge, the start and end points, are tied to the global quantize. So I'm going to jump ahead now. When I click on this, I'm going to jump this line ahead a full beat or behind a full beat. Just continually nudging back. So you can see how we're jumping around the entire mix. Let's do the same thing now with the Latin mix. Now this will do better when we get down here where it's louder. Nudge forward. Nudge back. Now repeatedly clicking this takes us back several knots while we're playing back. So we can jump back one beat at a time because that's our current global setting or a complete beat ahead. So let's do that again. 
and jumping ahead several. And for a moment now let's change our global quantize to a half. And so every time I click on this backwards, back, 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 two, so you can see we can jump around inside a file creating like a loop base pattern and you can change this anywhere down to a 30 second note all the way up to eight bars. So again, to get the most out of this, you're going to want to change your global quantize off its standard one bar setting. And you can use your set points here. And again, these nudge buttons, but they only become active when you're playing back live. So again, this feature of the nudge works even better when you've got a complete arrangement going around you and you're moving drums or bass line in and out. That concludes our look at the parameters inside our sample box.